They've accepted that half the country will be mm -hmm. allowed to do it. And mm -hmm. they're like, yay, we won this one. Mm -hmm. Instead, a real victory would have been mm -hmm. the Supreme Court coming out and being like, all human life has constitutional protections, whether they're in the womb or out. Therefore, taking the life is a violation of, of the constitution. That would have been a much better victory. If, agreed. If a, if, a, if a human has a, so a right saying, to life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, yeah. what, then, the, then the, the actual conservative position would be for the Supreme Court to come out and say, That's right. a, a human yeah. unborn baby is still a human, and it would be a violation of the law and the constitution to end its life or to grant the right to do so. Ergo, the Supreme Court would have said nationwide, it actually, and this actually makes more sense. The constitution granting protection to women to get abortions makes less sense than the constitution granting rights to a human being not That's to right. be killed. Yeah. Right. However, the conservative court didn't even rule that. They mm -hmm. said, leave us out of it. And the left is saying, the Republicans are extremists. No, the left are the extremists. The Republicans are, are happy to accept a moderate victory, meaning mm -hmm. we'll take what we can get in our red states and you do your thing. Whereas the left says, we want total domination nationwide. That, and that's, I, that's, that's what I was saying to begin with, that Roe v. Wade in its inception was illegitimate. And that it, they're making it seem like it being overturned as a far right a far position. right policy position when really it's the lukewarm moderate position agreed and so therefore mitch mcconnell actually shouldn't get the same credit that 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 he may get in in in, in our view but the the uh, the the point that i think needs to be driven home about abortion is that when a society loses the sanctity of life you can't have a precept of human rights and civil rights legitimately. Totally here's, agree. Here's, here's, I, I, just, well, I want to respond. Oh, hold on. Is based on slaughter you, of the native population. They're all humans. They were all humans, but they didn't act like true, they were. True. No, and that and that was a that was um, Protestant Christians taking the Lord's name in vain. It's not an indictment of God, and it's not an indictment of America. It's an indictment of those few men who chose to use the Lord's name in that way at that time. But it still doesn't change the universal truth about life whether it be native, whether it be American unborn today, or whether it be blacks during slavery. It, the, the precept of human rights and civil rights has to be dependent on a sanctity of life. If you don't have the sanctity of life, it doesn't only allow you to justify killing a human fetus, which is, is an info war of biblical proportions, but it also allows you to kill faceless people by double tap drone strikes yep. in Afghanistan. Yeah, yep. so, yeah, so I wanna, I wanna, jump on that but first i want to respond to what tim said because i think you make a great point i, I gotta like respond to to what, yeah, I got, yeah but i'm gonna respond well hold on well, so so <laughs> i don't i don't think that's entirely fair i agree with your assessment completely that the conservative pro-life position is and should be that abortion must be illegal nationwide i still think it's it's perfectly reasonable to say thank goodness that it can be restricted in some places now we haven't gone all the way with it this is not the end goal i, I understand that. yeah and my, uh, my point is just Republicans consistently fight for the moderate exact form, yeah, of the, the compromise. Yeah, I, and I would agree with that. I, I think that leaving it up to the states is ultimately the moderate position, and I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense. I have a question for you and yes. for conservatives. When do you think? When at at what point does a person gain constitutional rights? Uh, I would say the moment of fertilization. Yeah, you're a human being at that point. What do you think? Yeah, I would say the moment of conception. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Ian? Uh, when they get a birth certificate. Why? Because that's American citizens have American human rights. If you're Slaves not didn't have birth certificates. <clears throat> yeah, they didn't have those same human rights. They, they were granted it under the 14th Amendment. Well, eventually they got them. Through After the 14th an amendment, amendment. Like, there's no amendment that says that an unborn fetus has human rights. But, that, but I, I don't know if that's relevant. So you're asking me what I think morally it should be, not Yeah, legally? he's asking for your, like, uh, pre- Well, no, no, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. I, yeah. I accept your answer. Yeah. When they get a birth certificate. Yeah. When they're my, born, basically. So my question is just, like, why when they're born? You know, like, why is that the case? Uh, because, um, yeah, why when they're when born? They're that's when they start contributing to society. Oh, yeah, I, that's, I, I don't yeah. think so. I think... Yeah, that's a rat the, the, the problem, The problem with, with it, with that viewpoint, is it's a radical materialist mentality. And what, what you're basically saying is that your only value as a human being is your contribution to society. And, and that, is a, that is a predicate for the fourth industrial revolution, whether people want to consider it or not. This whole abortion argument is really a predicate for the fourth industrial revolution to be able to other 
human beings based on their level of productivity and justify killing them by food, whether it be big pharma, maybe a pandemic, uh, whatever the nuclear war, uh, health, freedom, climate, whatever it is, the ability to judge and rule somebody based on what they contribute to society solely as the, the anchor of their human rights or the fundamental claim of human rights is is just about as anti-human as you can get. I don't know, because what if they start tapping people's brains with neural net, reading minds, doing pre-thought crime, and they do it to babies in the womb, and they're like, that baby had an illegal thought when it was two months old. It's going to be, it's now arrested. There, like, there'll, Dude. Be, there'll be no neural net if I'm in Congress. That's a well, heresy. So, That's a heresy to begin with. So let, I I want, I want, I want, let me pull up this story we have from TimCast.com. Anna Navarro doubles down on comments about aborting special needs babies. She went on to say that she has a, she says, she says, quote, I have a brother who's 57 and has the mental and motor skills of a one-year-old. And I know what that means financially, emotionally, physically for a family. I have a step granddaughter who was born with Down syndrome. And you know what? It's very difficult in Florida to get services. It is not as easy as it sounds on paper. And I've got another. I've got a step grandson who is very autistic. This was her example for why there needs to be abortion. What? Effectively saying that all of these people should be dead. All people who have disabilities. That's a psychotic thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Ian, just a moment ago, you mentioned that, you know, when a person is born is when they gain constitutional rights. My question is, does the 57-year-old man with the motor skills of a one-year-old have constitutional rights? Yeah. You think he does? Yeah. What about a baby born with no brain? Yeah. I does have constitutional so. it still rights. has a name and a birth certificate. But a baby uh, uh, with a full functioning brain that functions more so than a born baby that has no brain, the unborn, be, be, like, so let's say that says two women and, they, and they're both sitting there, both equally as pregnant as each other. And one baby is born and the other was not, but they, they were fertilized at the exact same time. The one still in the womb has a fully functioning brain and the one outside of the womb has no brain, just a, just a cerebellum, so it's basic motor functions. You think the one without a brain does have constitutional rights and the one in the womb does not. Yes. So then killing the one in the womb is fine. It's, it's more ethical than killing the living human, yeah. So, so I accept your answer, but I don't understand it. No, I do. It, it, and, and, I'm, and I don't say this to be disparaging at all because you, you're my boy, I like you. Um, <laughs> Here it comes. No, I do, I, I, want, I like you. Um, but this is that whole sapiens uh noah yuval harari school of thought mm -hmm. is that um reality can only be measured by suffering right mm -hmm. and th like that's the ultimate form of measurement of of reality yeah and so the the suffering argument is whatever we can do to eliminate suffering to have to confront suffering to have to confront anxiety and despair whatever we can do to eliminate having to go through that process that is painful we'll do that and then we can justify doing it to kids because most likely if they're born into some patriarchal white supremacy society then they'll suffer and I, my, my point is that who do we think actually ends up dead in those scenarios from these white yuppie snowflake milk toast uniparty globalist establishment politicians black people brown people the numbers <clears throat> suggest that I, I have I have a thought experiment for you Ian so, all right, let's, let's say right here, you've got two women, they both conceived, they both had a baby conceived in them at the exact same moments. One baby has no brain and is born, and the other baby has a brain totally functioning, completely average, unborn. And you said that you think the one that was born but doesn't have a brain has more constitutional rights or does have constitutional rights and the one unborn doesn't, right? Yeah, I think, I don't know what the law is about like a brain dead person being born no, 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 if the no, no, parent no. has the right to kill it, like, I'm not, I'm not to pull it off I'm the just machine. Saying, you believe that the that baby that was born, even with no brain, has constitutional rights and the unborn has if, no like, rights. If like one's born prematurely with no brain? It, no, they're both they're both nine months gestation, but one was born and the other wasn't born yet. Because mm -hmm. there's, there's variation. So you're yeah, saying- you the, give the rights to the born person. Okay, so thought experiment. A mad scientist comes in the room and goes, -ha -ha, and he fires a growth ray at the other woman. <laughs> now she's 70 feet tall, but the baby stayed the same size. Her womb is now a giant open room and they bring in a TV and a table and the baby's still there and then someone raises the baby but still in the womb. The baby learns to read and write. Does it, still, does it have constitutional rights yet? No, not by modern day law. But by your by your opinion. Should it? With growth rays? Um, no, we're going <laughs> to have to rewrite uh, my, the law. For my point <laughs> is, I'm trying to understand why you don't think that baby has any rights. If the womb became as big as a skyscraper due to a mad scientist, an alien blasts them, she's like, ah, and she turns into a building. 
and the baby is still technically in the womb, but it's massive now. And people walk inside and they're teaching it math and reading and it's and it's aging and eating food. You, It has no rights. Still in the womb. <laughs> I mean... Uh- this is interesting the is because bigger. if you can neural net a baby and, and track its thoughts in the womb, we're going to have a, it's a, it'll be a revolution of what a baby is. Is it a human? Is it alive? Does it have I, rights? Yeah, it will at that point because we're able to communicate with it. But if you can't communicate with it, it doesn't have, for all intents and purposes, rights oh, yet. I don't know, man. Sometimes we have difficulty communicating, but I think we're both people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I guess well, I my, the point I'm trying yeah, to make, Justice, yeah. I do not understand the logic behind why a baby at nine months with with a with a thin layer of flesh between its face and a per and, and everyone else does not have any rights because it's attached to the mom. But the baby that was born is still attached to the mom too. Well, yeah, I guess, but it's about to be removed. No, it's, I didn't like say it was. Decided okay, once let's it's say born, it's, it's not in the cord. No, they don't cut the cord. It stays. It has no rights. It, well, eventually you got to cut the cord. Sure, sure, sure. But for in that moment, it has no rights. Yeah, I don't know what the process. Could is. Could you abort a baby that was born as long as you don't cut the umbilical cord? God, in some places, but I don't think. That would be legal. No. I just don't understand why a baby at nine months with a fully functioning brain that can understand music, that can kick and moves around and is literally no different physically than a baby at the exact same time of gestation, but is outside the womb. They're identical in every way. I don't understand where let, the separation let, of rights let, happens. Let's, let's, let's forget the rights for a second because I don't like the rights argument because the left doesn't believe in the Constitution. Mm. Good point. First of all. They believe the Constitution is always in flux, and our Constitution is amendable in some ways, but they believe in a completely relativistic view of the Constitution and even claim that the Constitution itself is illegitimate in its inception due to slavery, the natives, and white supremacy. So I don't like the rights discussion. Let's just make it more basic. Who are the most vulnerable people in the world? Children, young children. Unborn children. Babies. What, what scenario in a movie makes us the most angry when a dog gets hit by a car yeah (laughs) for for the liberal for the liberal yuppie vegan cokeheads for sure Uh, but 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 for me when i'm watching a movie the characters that we despise that that we despise the most traditionally are characters that kill a woman who has who is pregnant or has her children with her um you know in, in some gruesome fashion and there's a reason for that. And people don't want to give it its proper credit. But Abrahamic faith changed the trajectory from our, of our society away from a barbaric child sacrificing culture. That's the story of Abraham. He goes up into the mountain. Yeah. And b- before Abraham, child sacrifice was a common practice in barbaric pagan well, societies. But how else are you going to get the, the grain to grow? That's right. Yeah. You know? right. But, but I mean, that's exactly what they're doing. The they're sacrificing babies for economic growth. That's their whole argument. Oh, There's it's not like enough the resources harvest. for them. The harvest. What was that? What was that? A, what was a book? I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, they would like the springtime, and then they would like sacrifice the young woman or whatever. But my point is that the the this this whole abortion thing is not about rights, and it's not about Republicans and Democrats. This is an information war waged on women. Yeah. This is a this is a spiritual war waged on women, and to attack men. And the significance of legacy and lineage and, 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 and procreation, which is one of the most miraculous gifts that, that any species has, human or not. But ours is certainly special, given how special humans have proven themselves to be, scientifically speaking, even take away the faith and the divinity. But this is not about uh, any of the politics, really. This is an attack on women to try and convince women that their sole political power is anchored on their ability to kill their children. And and there is nothing more anti-human, anti-American and satanic than to tell women, all of your political standing should be dependent on this one right to kill the most important thing and function you can do as a woman. And their argument is that the primary function of being a woman shouldn't be bearing a child. That, you know, uh, Abort if, if there, there can be no women's rights without abortion rights and it's 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 strange to me that people don't see how anti-human that really is is having a child is one of the most amazing things that ever happened to me I have four but most women say that about childbearing and and for us to have reverse psychology convinced an entire generation of women that their rights, their their political power is anchored on the right to kill an unborn well, child well, is, is, is completely th- absurd. It's a bit unfair. 
you know, the real issue is that everyone knows humans die if they don't have sex, like yeah. eating. Yeah, so exactly. the women have no choice. They mm -hmm. have no choice but to have sex without protection and then get pregnant. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, right. They talk about so, like, they, so if they're going to succeed in the workplace, they need to be able to terminate their pregnancies. That's well, right. Or they can, you know, in all seriousness, just use a condom, an IUD, birth control. Absolutely. Or what about abstain? What, what or about, abstain? Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and why is the, many choices. Why is the application of science so relative? Right. And because you never hear in these arguments about abortion or, you know, sex or, you know, family planning. Don't we have reasonable methods to to measure ovulation? We do. Yep, we do. I mean, not down to a science. And there are there are exceptions. But but the ovulation the scheduling best. is is pretty is pretty thorough uh, and, and pretty surefire in, in most cases. And that's never even mentioned that we should use science in that way. They go immediately to let's kill unborn children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not let's use the advancement of science to, to regulate uh, or, or track ovulation. I've got, a, I've got a potential hypothesis here. Why is it that the left that is more likely to abort their kids, less likely to even get pregnant, more likely to get vasectomies, more likely to get their tubes tied. Why are they so adamant about there being uh, abortion access in red states? Why are they so adamant about teaching LGBTQ issues to children? I think these people recognize a very important thing. They don't have kids. They need Republicans to abort their babies. Otherwise, in 20 years, wow. the future is conservative. Wow. If the left is more likely to be LGBT, uh, LGBTQIA2 plus BB or whatever it is, those people are, are, are less likely to have children. If they are already more likely to get abortions, if they do get pregnant, all, or more likely to use prophylactics and get vasectomies, they're going to have substantially less kids. Over time, conservatives having kids means this country will be conservative. Mm. That's why they need to advocate for red states to allow abortion so they can try and stop Republicans from having kids wow. and they can advocate for young conservative women to don't ruin your life. You, you, you've got your whole future out of you. Have a child later. Get the abortion now. That was an info war that the Catholic Church is somewhat responsible for too. Hmm. Christianity, this whole child out of wedlock thing. I don't like it. And what I'm, do you mean? I'm a Christian. I'm a Catholic. I think that the entire cultural motif of shunning hmm. or, or bastardizing child children that were born out of wedlock was mm -hmm. a predicate for abortion well so i definitely think that we should not be shaming pregnancy we should be shaming adultery like for the sure. adultery was the part that was wrong the getting pregnant part it's not but wrong it, but, right? but but culturally no i hear you i hear what humans you're made you know that's how you knew if someone was yes adultery, they, yeah. they looked at the the child born out of wedlock as another exactly they, they didn't they didn't separate the sin of the parents from the the yeah. divinity of the childbirth very sad and that that uh, that was a that that that's how you have an av avalanche of cultural decay and misinformation that ends up being, well, you know, and uh, even conservatives, Christians, Catholics, you know, well, you had that child out of wedlock anyway. Go ahead and abort the kid. That's very sad. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at eight p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.